I used to be a sleepy mess in high school. I was constantly sleepy. I used to feel constantly sleep deprived and I didn't understand what exactly was going on until I grew up. I want to challenge you right now. Go to any African city in the morning and see how many children are awake at 4 a.m. and 5 a.m. They're all headed to school. Some of them very tender age of below 10 years. I thought about this recently and I thought about the sleeplessness epidemic that is going on around the world, not just in Africa, where growing children are not getting enough sleep. Yes, today we are going to talk about sleep. Welcome, this is The African Scientist. I don't know if it's just me or the recent years, there has been an uprising of the hustle culture. A culture that demonizes rest and makes you feel guilty for having enough sleep. I think it's time to remind ourselves that our bodies are designed to need rest. They are designed to have enough sleep. Sleep has many benefits. I'm sure we've all heard about them. But here's a quick refresher. Entire bodies of science have devoted their time and effort in studying human sleep. Despite many people thinking of it as a waste of our limited time on Earth, Scientists have shown time and time again that sleep plays a critical role in our mental alertness, our daily function, and even our health. The Sleep Foundation, yes, there is a foundation called the Sleep Foundation, has established that all human beings, indeed all animals, even plants, have something called the circadian rhythm. Our existence on Earth has programmed us to have these 24 hour cycles where we see the sun for half of the day and they experience darkness for the other half of the day. Indeed, evolutionary scientists do not know exactly how sleep first began because clearly some animals don't need it as much as we do. But science have pointed to our huge brains needing a rest from their state of wakefulness and perhaps also it emerging as a way to protect ourselves from the danger that we might have faced during the dark nights. Scientists have established the presence of light sensing neurons within the hypothalamus section of the brain that triggers the production of melatonin once we experience sunset and the opposite process happens where the production of a hormone called cortisol is produced when the sun rises and gives us a state of wakefulness and alertness. Sleep scientists have also established the presence of stages of sleep from the deep sleep state to the rapid eye movement state and the critical role that these stages of sleep play in the revitalization and rejuvenation of our brains. So clearly sleep is super important for every human being but do people of all ages need the same amount of sleep? I am sure we have all been through a stage of our lives where we have seen certain adults, maybe our teachers or our parents, condemn us as young people for being lazy because we sleep for too long. I actually never made the connection between a person's age and how much sleep they needed until very recently when I discovered that the developing brain in children needs way more rest than the developed brain in adults. Indeed, research has shown that the human brain doesn't stop developing and growing and forming neural connections until the late 20s. And this therefore means that the amount of hours that we need to sleep gradually reduces as we grow older. From up to 17 hours of sleep in newborns to only about 6 or 7 hours of sleep in fully grown adults in their 30s or 40s. This table here shows the amount of sleep that you need depending on your age. And as always, I will leave all sources linked below. Studies have found a correlation between obesity, diabetes, poor mental health and even problems with attention and good memory in children who do not get enough sleep. I think the modern society has been demanding more and more attention from children and our education system has been designed in a way that needs children to wake up early in the morning and keep on grinding at schoolwork the entire day with many parents taking their children for extra classes every day. Indeed many educational systems think that this kind of extreme drilling may be good to a child's academic performance, overall health, especially their mental well-being. Calling a child, especially an adolescent, lazy just because they sleep a little bit more than you do as an adult can be extremely problematic and it can inhibit them from enjoying their childhood and even enjoying their schoolwork. Perhaps one of the best tools in helping children get enough rest every night is by helping them to establish a consistent sleep 
sleeping schedule that allows them to go to bed at a specific time and wake up at a specific time every day, enabling them to have the correct number of sleep hours that they need. In addition to this, parents can try to limit the amount of exposure to technology, especially late at night, as this has been shown to inhibit and times delay the onset of deep sleep. As you take care of your kids' sleeping needs, please also don't forget yourself. Sleep can help you have better concentration and productivity at work. Sleep has also been found to help in weight loss and weight management. I don't know about you, I think we all need to reduce our tummy sizes. Sleep has also been shown to help with the health of our hearts with a great correlation between good sleep and reducing your chances for heart failure or heart attack. Emotional intelligence and preventing depression have also been linked to having enough good restful nights. A stronger immune system and even lower inflammation has also been linked to good quality of sleep. So what can you do to get better sleep? The sleep experts advise that you should set up a fixed schedule of when you go to sleep and when you wake up, as this will enable you to have healthier, better quality of sleep. In addition to this, sleeping in a room that has good temperature control, preferably a bit cooler, maybe setting the temperature in the lower 20s may help quality of your sleep. Sleeping in a dark room has been shown to help people to have deeper and better sleep. Avoiding caffeine and alcohol, especially near bedtime, is exceptionally important as caffeine prevents the useful hormones that are meant to make us feel sleepy from having their full effect on our brain. And alcohol has been shown to prevent the brain from going into deep sleep. So even though some people think that alcohol helps them to fall asleep, science shows that alcohol prevents the brain from fully going into deep sleep. And of course, exercise. Moving your body around can also enable you to get better rest every night. So what do you think about all this? Are you getting enough sleep? Do you think sleep is important to you? What about the child near you? Do you think they're getting enough sleep every night to enable them to be successful and functional in school? Let your opinions be heard in the comments below. I recently made a video about genetically modified organisms and the role they could play in helping Africa meet its food security needs. A link to that is in the pop-up banner and you can also listen to an entire podcast where I talked to a genetically modified organism specialist about the nitty gritties of genetic modification, especially in the foods that we eat. If you like what we do here at The African Scientist, you can always support us by subscribing to this channel, liking this video, and maybe sharing it to someone you think would appreciate it. And of course, we have these two links that you'll find in the description that will help you to support us by buying us a coffee. Thank you so much. This has been the African scientist, science from an African perspective.